And now we're going to leave the stage and leave Ian up here because he has important announcements to make about the winners of the, short, the Peter Wells Short Fiction Contest. The Peter Wells Short Fiction Contest celebrates the life and work of our founder, Peter Wells, who was himself a great writer of short fiction in addition to the novels and historical works he wrote. The contest gives LGBTQI writers from Aotearoa the opportunity to prove their creative skills and to promote their work to a wider audience in a safe environment. The first prize is $1,000, with the runner-up receiving $500. There is also a prize of $500 for the best young writer under the age of 25. These prizes are possible through the generosity of our sponsor, Foundation North. We are hugely grateful to them for their support. So I'd like you to give them a clap. <laughs> this year, the theme of the contest was freedom, which seemed appropriate after a year of lockdowns, face masks, and travel restrictions, but writers had freedom to interpret the word as they wished. We received 31 entries this year, 15 of which were by young writers under the age of 25, including entries from writers as young as 12 and 14. The judges were Gina Cole and Brendan Weir, who are both here tonight. I'm now going to ask them to come up to announce the winners. Strength and ignorance. Lots of the latter. All right. They've asked me to keep this short. Good luck. <laughs> Kia ora, welcome. I've been asked to keep the comments short, so I will. A couple of people have asked me uh, during the day, earlier today actually, about the process that the judges follow, and um, I'm happy to share it. I think any insight into the process is quite helpful sub for submitters in the future. Uh, the competition is judged blind. Uh, the convener uh, receives all entries and removes any identifying features from each work before passing them on to the judges. Uh, so we judge everything blind, we read every entry, uh, we consider how it explores the given theme for the competition, and we consider many, many different elements of the writing itself, from narrative structure to development of authorial voice, just everything. Uh, it's a long process. Uh, it takes time to digest and fully consider such a diverse body of work. Uh, this year it took us over a month, and to give you some idea, I think the word count in total was something around 80,000 words. Yeah, start calculating it. Um, I'm going to leave it to my fellow judge, Gina Cole, to uh, um, announce this year's winners. But I would like, like to quickly mention those which made uh, my shortlist. Uh, in fact, both of our shortlists, I think, it was almost 100% crossover. The quality of submissions was very high, and because of that, I ended up considering quite a lot of the pieces as potential winners. Now, I've arranged these in alphabetical order. Uh, the first one was named Aotearoa, I'm putting my queer shoulder to the wheel. It's an utterly refreshing, unremittingly indulgent comic satire. Uh, the authorial voice is clear, fun, and rather brave. Uh, I don't know who any of these are by, by the way, so I hope, I hope some of you are out there, and I just want to tell you that your work is absolutely fantastic. Second one, apop Apocalyptic Closure. It's a great original idea, uh, and it was well developed through the use of contrasting voice. Uh, third one is Grace Note, uh, an internalised narrative, uh, which uses a sustained musical metaphor to explore personal growth. Uh, the next one was titled In the Cage. It's gritty and timely. Uh, it contrasts the internal and external struggles facing professional or semi-professional sports people. Uh, next one was Redux, uh, a science fiction story crafted in third person prison. Not easy to do. Classic story structure with a great twist. Uh, it glues the reader to the page. It really was great. Next one was Ride of Your Life. 
Uh, this story is a cohesive narrative about acceptance and freedom with beautifully drawn characters that ring completely true. The sort of story you read and go, oh yeah, I know him. Oh yeah, I know her. Soundproof is another science fiction work that uses the alternative elements of the narrative to augment its character-driven nature. Uh, tender contains wonderful lyrical moments. Contrasting sentence structure is beautifully handled and adds to the complexity of the narrator's, narrator's voice. Uh, it's a lovely piece of work. Uh, the Getaway is an intriguing tale with a nicely evoked setting. The narrative keeps the reader guessing and delivers a great twist. Uh, when She Disappears uh, is a well-handled exploration of a complex theme, some memorable use of language which highlights the dualities in the narrative. Uh, all of these submissions were excellent, and in most cases, they were only separated from the winning entries by quite narrow margins. I encourage everyone who submitted this year to keep writing, to keep creating. The future of LGBTQ plus writing is clearly in great hands. Thank you. Tēnā koutou katoa, he mihi mahana ki a koutou, tēnei te mihi nui ki a koutou ngā kaituhi takatāpui o Aotearoa. Uh, good evening, everyone. I think um, it is fitting that this contest now bears Peter's name and that it is called the Peter Wells Short Fiction Contest. It is a great tribute to Peter. Uh, he always supported and encouraged all of us takatāpui writers, and he was a great advocate for our writing. Uh, and I think I speak on behalf of both Brendan and myself when I say that the standard of writing was very high, um, which bodes well for the future of LGBTQIA plus writing in Aotearoa. So on the one hand, it meant we really enjoyed reading all your stories, uh, but it also made it very difficult for us when it came to the, the judging. However, there were a few standouts and I want to congratulate you all and it is my job to announce the winners. Uh, so, there is an award for an up and coming writer under 25 and that award goes to a story called Urban Foraging. Um, this is a series of five vignettes exploring friendship and possibly a burgeoning romance between two young people. Um, it's, it has a, a beautiful filmic quality, this story, and it is wonderfully written. Um, I don't know if... We don't know who <laughs> The winner's name is Joy... Holly, Joy Hol Holly, and <clears throat> un un unfortunately Joy can't be with us tonight. She lives in Wellington and was unable to get up here. That makes sense. A lot of this story is set in Wellington, so <laughs> yes. Um, the runner-up, the overall runner-up, is a story called Hi Honey. Uh, this, the, this story I call the moose story. Um, it's about a young woman who travels to Fiordland to photograph an elusive mythical moose. Um, it's a very well written story of loss and longing and uh, it, it's about the, uh, the main character's relationship with her ex-girlfriend and with her mother and with her father and the freedom that comes with acceptance. So. And Hi Honey was written by Isabel McNair. And she also lives in Wellington and is unable to be here tonight. <laughs> okay, so the winner um, on the theme of freedom, as these stories all were, uh, is a story called You Are Now Entering the Psychosis Chamber of the Oracle. <laughs> Wonderful name. Um, this is a modern fairy tale about three girls, schoolgirls, uh, on a school girl, on a school trip to an art gallery, um, interacting with a piece of art 
Um, it's a, a beautifully wrought story with delightful characters. It draws the reader in and doesn't let go. And a, an incredibly accomplished voice. And unusually, the winner of the overall award is also the writer of the winning award for the under 25s, Joy Holly. <laughs> it is unusual for, um, for this to happen. It has happened once before. Um, she did submit two entries, and they were both winning entries. I think, I think all of these stories will be published in Pantograph Punch. But yeah, they're going, they're, all the stories will be published in the Pantograph Punch, and they'll also be published on our same, same website. Um, and also, two or three of the other stories, the runners-up, will also be published in the Pantograph Punch. Thank you. Yes, I will let you go, I promise. Just final, final thank yous. This is our um, last event for the evening and tomorrow we're doing a live stream event and a workshop. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to um, thank Blondine who has been here all day live streaming for us. <laughs> and just doing an outrageous, like, the amount of time and energy that she's, she's been here all week setting up and making sure that this runs smoothly and has just gone above and beyond and, yeah, really, really appreciate all that you have done for us. That's really incredible to be able to share this across Aotearoa and um, the world. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, I also really want to thank Julie, who is... who does all of the behind the scenes stuff, booking flights, making snacks, which she tells me that I need to tell you to eat afterwards and drink so we don't have to carry them home. Um, she's, she's been here since the start. She was handpicked by Peter because she's wonderful and studious and joyful and <laughs> she just does everything and thinks of everything and I feel like quite often you don't get recognized for all that you do. And I just wanna really... And I also really, really want to thank the board. If the, if the committee can come up here and take a little bow on the stage, show off your beautiful spaces. I, ca I can't actually tell you how many hours and hours of emails and meetings and work that goes behind the scenes to, you know, do the Twitter posts, put the, the, the Facebook pages together, organise live streams, do these wonderful, beautiful brochures and, you know, Ian has to, every year that I do the programme I send him my writing about, about each event and he has to fix up my grammar and my poorly worded sentences and he does it with such beauty and grace and... <laughs> It just makes everything look wonderful and um, they're just a beautiful team who work very well and do, we do so much and it's just so rewarding that you come out to enjoy that in person and keep sharing that and I just yeah, really want to say thank you to all of us for, for putting that time and energy into. Yeah.